Thank you all. I hope that you enjoyed this wonderful afternoon of music. Thank you to the Jangle and Reinhardts. Music is so good for the soul, and it's so wonderful to get to watch a group that just loves performing together and having fun together. So I hope that you all enjoy this uplifting afternoon. Um, and also, I hope that you all have seen in the elevators our new posters for November and December programming. We have a lot more um, virtual entertainment coming up, so be sure that you mark your calendars for all those dates. So even though we can't join corp corporately in the um, theater together, we can still watch amongst the campus together and enjoy the same performances while being distant. So I will um, turn it over now to John to continue on with today's live update. Thank you again for tuning in and enjoy the afternoon. All right, I'd like to thank the Jangling Reinhardts. I got the opportunity to watch a good portion of it from backstage and I will say it was the funnest thing I've done this week, um, for sure. And I also want to thank Jessica and the performing arts team for making these kinds of fabulous programs happen. Um, we're really blessed to have this kind of talent, uh, both in the theater team and uh, here on stage. Uh, having that avail available to us, especially during uh, these times, is, is really a blessing. So today I have a lot of news to share with you. Uh, then you will hear about the work going on at the Pond uh, from Kathleen Pender. Then Gail Hagland has some great news about the Saturday Night Movie, which I'm sure you'll all, uh, that's good news, you'll like that. And then after Gail, Vanessa Perry has our pastoral care segment. Um, so now let me get into the campus news. Um, you're probably watching TV and, and getting some of that news that unfortunately the, the coronavirus pandemic is getting worse across our nation and across our region and it's also uh, increasingly getting challenging here in our community at Westminster Canterbury. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to ensure the safety and well-being of all of you, the residents, and our staff. Um, we are working closely with the Virginia Department of Health uh, relative to our next steps as we move forward. Um, as you know from watching the live briefing, briefings each um, week, we've been very blessed at Westminster Canterbury so far. But the situation is becoming increasingly more challenging here on campus, um, and we are seeing more cases. We need everyone's assistance and cooperation to stay safe stay well, and to get to the other side of this uh, situation that we're in right now. Today, I'm gonna give you an update on our resident and employee cases. Then I'm gonna tell you about some temporary programming changes that we are uh, needing to make immediately, and some possible changes that may be coming uh, in the next few days as we continue to manage this situation and get some guidance from uh, the health department. You will receive a written uh, memo tomorrow uh, that explains um, our experience, uh, exp explains the changes uh, as we get through them here. Um, we also plan to do our uh, a briefing on Tuesday next week, just to keep you up to speed on changes between now and uh, what happens between now and then. So we'll go back to Tuesday, Thursday, at least for next week, um, and we'll see how it goes. So now let's talk about what's going uh, what's happening here amongst our residents. Um, currently, we have eight residents that have tested positive for COVID-19. Five of those eight are being cared for in our COVID-19 positive unit in the pavilion, and three of them are currently in the hospital. I'm very, very sorry to have to share this, but the prognosis of one of our residents that's in the hospital is poor. And while we knew this pot was a possibility and has been a possibility from the start, it's heartbreaking to be going through it now and to have to share that with you. Please keep this resident, all the residents, uh, and their families in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we certainly hope uh, for the best, but we, uh, um, we, we know that we have at least one resident that's, that's struggling uh, right now with the virus. Several employees on campus have experienced symptoms recently and have, are out awaiting test results. Others, uh, a good number of other staff, 
have had direct exposure to someone who's tested positive for COVID-19, either here on campus or out in the community. We're seeing an increased number of exposures out in the community amongst kids and amongst family members uh, and uh, from different, uh, all sorts of different things. So everybody who's been exposed uh, will be tested, has been tested in our quarantine quarantining per the recommendations from the Virginia Department of Health. We currently have 10 employees who are out positive with COVID-19 and recovering. Additionally, we have one contractor uh, who tested positive uh, for COVID-19 on Tuesday uh, after exposure to a family member who had previously tested positive. This contractor, thankfully, had not been in the building uh, for at least a week, so we think the risk there is very low. We will have a team here tomorrow um, from Virginia Department of Health. Uh, they'll be here on campus to provide us with some additional guidance on our next steps as we work to contain uh, the outbreak that we have right now. Um, and uh, our sincere hope is that we don't see any more cases in amongst our independent living residents or in our assisted living communities. Um, currently, everybody who uh, that I mentioned is either in the COVID unit or in the hospital. We don't have anyone that we know of uh, in independent living. Now for some of the campus changes uh, that are uh, going to be taking place. Uh, beginning this afternoon, we are pausing some of our resident services so that all of those spaces can undergo a more thorough disinfection uh, of the spaces. And until such time as we have a greater confidence that the risks of spread amongst the independent living and assisted living residents. Once that risk comes down a little bit, we'll try to move forward. But for now, we're gonna suspend some things. These temporary changes are proactive and precautionary. Um, but if we do have an additional new case, and it's a big if, but if we had an additional case in independent living or assisted living, we will need to shut down most all of our programs and services until that situation resolves. So let me talk to you through what's temporarily changing. Um, first, um, we need to strongly discourage visitation uh, on campus, both in assisted living and independent living. We hope this is a very short-term situation, but uh, our confidence right now is, is a little, uh, we're a little bit uncertain. We want to make sure everybody stays safe. Um, so while we're not forbidding visitation today, um, we're going to get some guidance tomorrow from Virginia Department of Health. Um, and they may suggest it, they may require it. Um, so just, we need to be prepared for that. And we really need you to encourage your family members uh, to take some time uh, away. We've been open now for a long period. Take, take a week uh, and let's see how this plays out. Um, less visitation is very helpful. Small groups, pastoral care programming, recreation and wellness activities are going to sus be suspended this afternoon. Uh, and salon services in all areas of campus, the art studio and the wood shop are going to close, at least through the weekend. Uh, we'll we'll read reassess it on Monday and we'll see where we are. The Galleria will close for the rest of this week uh, and, uh, and they may offer delivery service for things you need uh, next week. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Virtual performances like we had here in the Sarah Bell Never Been Theater uh, will continue uh, and, and we don't have any plans to, to stop that. The CVS Pharmacy will remain open but we do have a one customer at a time uh, limitation. Transportation services will continue. And as I said, um, based on the direction that we get from the Virginia Department of Health um, that we have been getting, uh, we need to really discourage assisted living and independent living visitation until this situation settles down. Um, we have had a few situations where either residents or their visitors have been exposed and gotten sick. And so we need to uh, really reconsider whether or not that visitation is required right now. Hopefully by early next week we'll be in a different position. We can have a little more confidence. Um, but we have had, as you know, we've had two people in independent living uh, test positive now. So we, um, and both of them, one's in the hospital uh, and uh, one's in our COVID unit. I think. 
I'm not sure. They might both be in the hospital. Um, we hope, um, uh, well, if we experience more positive cases, we will need to temporarily close the common spaces again. Uh, we'll need to close promenade in-person dining and suspend visitation, like I mentioned. Um, hopefully that won't happen. Uh, we're, we're really hopeful we can stop this situation where it is now. Uh, and we will monitor our situation closely and update you as, uh, as we need. Uh, you'll get a memo tomorrow that, that spells out a little more. Um, we are in the process of continuing to contact trace all these cases and working to control uh, the spread at this point. Um, so changes for Parsons Health Center. Um, all communal dining and recreation in the Parsons Health Center has been suspended and all the floors will remain in quarantine uh, through um, the end of this outbreak. And we don't know what the date, of that, of the, what the date will be at this point. Um, so um, it's, it's closed for now. Family visitation in all areas of Parsons Health Center is suspended, um, uh, obviously, except in end of life and compassionate care situations. If you'd like to schedule a FaceTime, a Skype, or a Zoom uh, meeting with your family member, uh, we'd encourage you to do that. Please contact uh, your recreational therapist who you've worked with in the past or, or reach out to your social worker. Um, in assisted living, like I said, while we're discouraging visitation, um, it, is, um, it is still allowed, at least in, until tomorrow when we get some guidance. We anticipate new guidance from VDH tomorrow, and, and that may for some changes uh, in assisted living. We'll, like, like I said, we'll share those updates as we have them. That's a lot of information. Um, it's not all good information, it's not all good news. Um, we are, there is um, quite a bit going on. So we appreciate everyone's patience and your diligence uh, and your prayers, because uh, we're, we're working hard to keep this situation under control and keep everyone well. Um, but uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a rough couple weeks. And so just thank you in advance. Uh, for all the um, positive energy. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time and attention today. I'm sorry to have to share such a difficult message. Um, we knew going in that restarting our programs and services and reopening the campus to visitation could get challenging. Um, we knew that, um, but we wanted to make sure that we offered that opportunity when, when uh, the conditions were good. Now that the conditions have changed out in the broader community, um, we're gonna need to tighten back down and, and be smart uh, going forward. We'll manage our way out of this, um, but it's gonna be a hard period and, and we're gonna need your help. So thank you in advance. Please keep all of our frontline staff and our sick residents in your prayers. Thank you uh, very much. Next up is Kathleen Pender, and I will see you on Tuesday if I don't see you in the hallway. Good afternoon. I'm excited to let you know that we have begun our Cochrane Pond Rejuvenation Project. This project is very special to me as it about 10, 12 years ago now, when I previously worked at True Green Land Care, the Cochrane Pond Project was my first large scale project that I oversaw here at Westminster Canterbury Richmond. I remember meeting with the group of residents and staff and our original concept and goals of the project were to provide natural food sources for the birds and ducks, to incorporate native plant materials with seasonal interest, to install landscape lighting to create a destination for this area. Now, 12 years later, I am so excited to be able to rejuvenate this beautiful space. Our rejuvenation project includes the removal of overgrown plantings that BCLS has completed last week. Montgomery Irrigation is getting started this week, working as weather permits with the irrigation and landscape lighting rough-in, where they will begin installing their irrigation pipes throughout the mulch bed areas. This will be a wonderful improvement throughout this space as we have never had irrigation for the plantings previously which resulted in some plant loss over the years. Following Montgomery's irrigation rough-in installation, BCLS will return to work on the hardscape, which includes the installation of two retaining walls. 
These walls will be located on both the left and the right sides of the perimeter of the pond sidewalk. These walls will include capturing the drainage from the hillsides and retaining the sloping grade. A small dry stacks field stone retaining wall will be installed in front of the Huxley greenhouse. Additional hardscape work includes the installation of additional riprap stone around the perimeter of the water's edge, installation of small terrace stone with metal edging to border the interior sidewalk perimeter and help with water runoff from the sidewalks. Lastly, a few select areas surrounding the sidewalk at the pond will be excavated to create a paver bench area, similar to the recent paver bench area that was installed at the sidewalk near the Avalon entrance. This will provide dedicated seating areas adjacent to the main sidewalk, allowing pedestrians to continue their walk without interference of benches. Following the completion of the hardscape work, BCLS will begin with the installation of replacement plant materials around the Cochrane Pond. There is a major focus to include native plant materials around the pond. This area will attract our pollinators and provide natural food and nectar sources to our wildlife. There is also a major concentration of selecting the right plant for the right place so that we focus on providing seasonal interest and seasonal color without blocking main vistas and views of the Cochrane Pond. I will be working with the Landscape Garden and Greenhouse Committee as we review these plant selections and locations during this portion of the project. We are focused again selecting native plants that will be host plants to our native honeybees, butterflies, moths, songbirds, and of course our beloved ducks. In conjunction with the plant installation, Montgomery Irrigation will work in concert with BCLS on the installation of the new landscape lighting. In the past 12 years, landscape lighting technology has really come a long way. The lights that will be installed are the same type of landscape lighting that were installed at the Spiritual Center and the Tower Green. The Tower Green landscape lighting was installed by Montgomery Irrigation. These lights will be LED and will adequately illuminate the Cochrane Pond within and around the landscape. In closing, the Cochrane Pond Rejuvenation Project is very exciting and one that is near and dear to me. The schedule for this project is heavily dependent on weather and may be delayed at times as a result of inclement weather. There will also be seasonal delays as we approach Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays and work schedules around. As the crews work on specified portions of the project, they will block off portions of the sidewalk to create safety work zones. Please do not cross these barricades for your safety and for the safety of the crew. Additionally, there may be times when out of an abundance of caution that we will need to close down the sidewalks at the Cochrane Pond as we get into heavier construction of the retaining walls, et cetera. Please stay posted to updates in the tales TV 970 or Touchtown as I will try to communicate these time frames to you through these outlets as needed. Thank you in advance for your understanding as we embark on this exciting journey together and I do hope that you will enjoy watching the transformation and rejuvenation of this endearing destination on our property. Next is Gail Haglin. Thank you, Kathleen, and thanks for hanging in with us on this fairly long update today. Now, if you'll just plan to hang on for just a few more minutes until the end of the pastoral care segment, we do have an extra little treat coming your way here on the stage, so hang in there. Now, I have great news for you uh, in time for this Saturday's Saturday night movie and I know you've been disappointed that it hasn't been able to run the last few weeks but Rebecca Hatch and Eric Price have been working hard on a solution uh, for running the movies and they have done it so hooray for them so now we have a new solution and we're ready to restart those so this Saturday November 14th the movie Baby Boom with Diane Keaton, Sam Shepard, and Harold Ramis will play on TV 971 at 7 p.m.
Now that's channel 971, not 970. So flip your channel over, please, to 971. It's 7 o'clock. These movies were chosen by a resident committee, and we have a nice long list of movie titles that we'll be playing every Saturday night. So hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much. And next up is Vanessa Perry. Good afternoon, everyone. Few announcements for you. A sermon for every Sunday will re-air, will air on TV 970 this Sunday at 4 p.m. The preacher will be Reverend Philip Martin from Epiphany Lutheran Church. He will be preaching the parable of the tales taken from Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Our annual starlighting concert will be shown on TV 970 at 4 p.m. on Sunday, November the 29th. Each year, we have a symbolic lighting of the rooftop star as part of that service. Our tradition is to have resident, a resident volunteer have the distinct honor of being the starlighter. Here's how we're pick, picking a starlighter this year. There are jars around campus with purple pieces of paper next to them. If you would like to enter the drawing to be our 2020 starlighter, please write your name on the piece of paper and put it in the jar. During the next 3 p.m. Update, update, we'll be drawing names for our honorary starlighter for this year. The James River Brass will be our guest musical group, and they will help us welcome the Advent and Christmas seasons with some beautiful music. They will be playing a prelude 15 minutes before the start of the service, so tune in early to hear. In case you missed watching the David F. Peters lecture this week, it will re-air on Tuesday, November the 19th at 7.30 p.m. That again is Tuesday, November the 19th at 7.30. Also, next Thursday, tune in to our weekly chapel service starting at 10.30. The preacher will be Reverend Dan Rainey Dankel and Susie Frazier will be the pianist. Hear now a reading from Romans chapter 8. I, can, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our ad adaptation to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for guidance. We are facing some uncertain times. We are having another shift in Richmond and the surrounding areas, and we are unsure about what the upcoming holidays will bring, whether our normal traditions can continue this year. We have lost loved ones and friends, and so we are hurting. But somewhere in that hurt and pain, we stand in expectation. We know that the upcoming Advent season symbolizes that hope, expectation, and also waiting for you to come. And so we will wait on your coming and trust in your will for our lives. Lord, it is in you that a sense of calmness and peace can come, if only for a few moments. Let us be grateful for those moments and enter into the rest of the week and weekend with renewed strength and purpose to keep fighting. We pray for the health and safety of all residents, staff, family, contractors here at Westminster Canterbury. Continue to be with us, for it is in your name that we pray. Amen. As a reminder, our next update will be Tuesday, November the 17th at 3 p.m. 
Now, let's welcome back the jangling Ryan Hearts for one final song. Well, thank you very much. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh. Mm -hmm. 